for that film. This is your second time at Imagination. I hope there'll be a third time. Thank you. Oh. Uh, alors, est-ce qu'il y a des questions? I just wanted to take a moment to thank these two amazing ladies who have put together this festival for a long time now and 5,000 years. And thank you so much. For Yeah, was anyone at uh, Imagination 21 for a Jihad for Love? Okay. Uh, Do you want to say something mm -hmm. about your film? Uh, I think I saw a hand at the back, actually. I see one here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you say in the, in the film, and uh, we hear it quite often, uh, uh, said by Muslims and by uh, politicians in this country and other countries, that Islam is a religion of peace. What, what's the basis for that assertion? Well, I'm finding it, the question was, you say in the film that Islam is a religion of peace. And what is the basis for that assertion? Uh, personally, I'm finding it harder and harder um, in the last couple of months. And I've been traveling a lot with this film, um, especially in Europe in the last couple of months. Uh, to stand up and make that statement easily uh, that Islam is a religion of peace. So I acknowledge that your question is a serious one. Uh, but the way I say it in the film is that my Islam is one of peace and redemption. So I'm taking back control or trying really hard to take it from the conservatives and let's say, from ISIS or from the Saudis. So that's my Islam. And it's not necessarily a general statement saying Islam is a religion of peace. Well, but that's what you said in the film. And that's what we all my said. Islam that's is a religion of I mean, peace. Yeah. Based on what? I mean, what the text or the life of the Prophet. The Prophet was a warrior, after all. He led armies. And these armies killed many people. He killed prisoners of war. So on what basis is, I, I would still like to know, it's not enough to say my religion is a religion of peace, it has to be based on text or practice. I mean, what is the, there has to be some objective uh, basis for the assertion that, that Islam is a religion of peace. Well, I think all religions have a history of violence, mm -hmm. and I don't think you can single out Islam and say that that it's only for Islam. I'm not and, saying that, but yeah, the prophet was a warrior. Christ was not a warrior. Buddha this is not, not a, a question, it's a long <laughs> statement you're making. Uh, yes, but I'm go on speaking. What, yeah. what is the basis for the assertion that Islam <clears throat> is a religion of peace? There has to be some basis, and what is it? Uh, my Islam is a religion of peace. Well, that's nothing. To say my Islam is a religion of peace. The answer to your question. Not an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Yeah. Uh, is there another question? No, let's, I mean, we can engage in this discussion, but um, I think these are dangerous times. I think there's a lot of Islamophobia, and I think that there is enough reason for that. Uh, in this film, at least, and I speak through my work, I am trying to make a lot of important distinctions, and one of them is the kind of Islam that I was brought up with and what I grew up with and the Saudi version of Islam, which is really problematic and needs to be dealt with. Um, the ideology of ISIS, for example, comes from Wahhabi doctrine in Saudi Arabia. So that interpretation of Islam, the Saudi interpretation of Islam, since the 18th century has been an enormous problem. And the Saudis have exported it with a great deal of success all around the Muslim world forcing societies to become more conservative. Mm -hmm. So I think there is this kind of transition and time of reformation, if you will, being forced upon Islam. And I think that these are important discussions that Muslims around the world are having. Mm -hmm. Let's take another question right there. Yes, my question is thank you very much for your presentation. First of all, it's very 
I like to see that film around everywhere again and again because it has a tremendous effect on how we can view all these people. I know a lot of Muslim, I Muslim people, and they're very nice and peaceful people. And my question is, how is it received elsewhere in Europe? Uh, does it change the view of people? And what's the uh, welcoming of your film elsewhere? Uh, great question. The question is about how people are responding uh, to the film. Uh, that gentleman has left, actually. I would like to have engaged him on this as well. well. He hasn't left. He's oh, right he's here. still here. Okay, here. so the very same Muslims that I'm trying to reach with this film uh, and trying to connect to the important issues that are raised in this film are reacting very angrily mm -hmm. to the existence of the film. So I'm definitely at the receiving end um, of death threats and hate mail uh, just based on the very existence mm -hmm. of this film. And, um, and I'm learning how to deal with that. However, there are also Muslims that have been present in audiences. Um, in Toronto, for example, where we played several times earlier this year, who feel that the film goes to the root of questions that need, they need to be having within their communities, within Muslim communities. So I think that the film is really important and is going to occupy a space over a period of time where it will enable these discussions to happen. Am I getting all kinds of love and support from Muslims all around the planet? Absolutely not. And I think it's something that will happen over time. That's also something that happened with my previous film, A Jihad for Love, but it took a long time to reach that place. Yes, sir. Uh, I have three things to say. Bra uh, first of all, bravo, Parves, uh, for putting all, the, all of the uh, image, because uh, now I can see what's happening actually when, when uh, people doing a Hajj of the, the image. Uh, first of all, because uh, I actually came originally from Indonesia, where the population is 95% Muslim. So, um, yes, thank you very much. Now I can see uh, in the movie what it looks like uh, of uh, doing the pilgrimage. Uh, second, um, actually, uh, I know that it's, it's not you're not supposed to uh, film uh, with your camera, with your iPhone. But is where is actually uh, the limit uh, that you're not where which locations uh, in each city that you're not supposed to uh, to, to film it? Um, right. Um, actually, there are pilgrims taking selfies all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they want these moments in their spiritual journeys. So everyone wants an image with the Kaaba, and it's the 21st century and the Saudis have given up on implementing Wahhabi law that says that no depiction of the human form is allowed because everyone is equipped with a smartphone. Uh, so I call this the Saudi selfie movie in, in my case with this particular thing. But the prohibitions on filming uh, exist all around in the city of Mecca, especially and inside the Masjid al-Haram that houses the Kaaba. Uh, but as I said, there's an enormous amount of selfie taking that happens all the time during the Hajj. So you just have to Google it and you'll find tons. <laughs> right, so. Uh, first of all, thank you for the film. I, I thought it offered a, a very unique uh, perspective of uh, this world to uh, non muslims uh, in my case. Um, I just wanted to ask, in terms of you were saying, um, that obviously you've been with some controversy in the past and you were worried about <coughs> getting to the Saudi immigration. Do they control in any way uh, who enters mm. the country for the Hajj? I mean, did you conceal your identity in any way? Or how is it that you were able to enter freely if you had this fear of being uh, banned? Uh, great question. He was. Uh, how did you enter, basically? I think I slipped in through the cracks. I think the Saudi regime, uh, in fact, it's a fact that during Hajj time annually, they're processing about three million visas. So they don't necessarily uh, give the same level of scrutiny 
to everyone who is applying for a Hajj visa. And I think I just slipped in through the cracks. If I had tried to go at another time, which is a time other than the Hajj, I am sure I would not have been allowed into the country. And after this, I'm pretty sure they're not going to let me in <laughs> anywhere. So, so that, and then there was an element of hiding in plain sight. In a sense, the enormous amount of people around me, uh, three million people come to Mecca every year, provided me this ability to hide in plain sight and make this film. However, during early parts of filming, especially in Medina in Saudi Arabia, I did have the religious police come and take my phone from me, and they deleted um, a lot of footage. So that happened, uh, but as the Hajj went on, um, I felt even more empowered and more shameless, and I said, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to film the rest of this. And I was able to. And then I was able to leave customs. Um, I put the SD cards in my check-in baggage, uh, the phone I carried on me, and I think divine intervention allowed <laughs> this to happen. Yeah. yeah. So I have two questions. One is you mentioned Sufi Islam, but you did not elaborate in any way. So that is definitely a different interpretation of Islam, and which is not violent in nature. I think for people who have concerns about Islam being a religion of peace and brotherhood, that would be a good pointer. The second point is, did you have a backup camera <coughs> for your Haji? Because sometimes we saw you on the screen while uh, in the film. How did that happen? Uh, I'll answer the second one first. Uh, the modern Hajj, you actually go in a group. So you're not allowed to go as an individual. Um, so I had become friends with one of my fellow pilgrims more than the others. And I actually came out to him during the pilgrimage and told him I was gay and he had actually heard about a jihad for love and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So he's the person I requested to take those few shots of me because as I was there, I realized it would be important to have that um, um, evidence, visual evidence, if you will. So that's how that happened. Uh, I did not elaborate on Sufi Islam because I did not want the film um, to be uh, that kind of film that would have talking heads and explain every single thing. I was trying to make or trying to break away from how I had dealt with the documentary form in my first film. So a lot of stuff that you see exists in abstraction and in many different ways that are not traditional documentary storytelling. So I tried to do that and therefore I did not explain what Sufi Islam is, hoping that audience members will go and look for it themselves. Yeah. Yes, sir. After all of that quest and the movie and everything, you think you are a better Muslim now? Yeah, I'm a better Muslim. <laughs> yeah. You reached your goal? I did, yeah. Yes. And there's no, as I say in the film, I really mean it. Um, this is no longer a question of whether Islam will accept me. The question is whether I, as a gay Muslim, will accept Islam. So I take Islam, but I do so on my own terms. And they're not necessarily uh, the terms of most Muslims. And that's why now your religion is a religion of peace. Uh, at least mine is. But I'm also able to acknowledge that contemporary Islam has a huge problem with violence. Mm. And we have to look as Muslims within our own communities. And not enough of that is happening. Mm. Mm. Right there. But Alves, I will say it's kind of strange because during the film festival, there was the movie about the priest, uh, Monsieur Gradel, that was a kind of a man of change. And I think that your role as a Muslim, because I saw your previous movie, and I think each of us should make her own um, not, not statement, but I think you're this type of person that encourage others to always make change in her own communities, family, or society. So I think it's very, I want to thank you for the movie, and I think it's a, 
of Shoah. It was very interesting for me because I came from a family where my parents were very Catholic, very devoted. My mother told me story about the pilgrim they used to do when they were child. And I can see where it's come from. The Catholics have the same history. And I want to thank you for it. It's not a question, it's just a comment, but uh, thank you so much for bringing this to us. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. And uh, I'll just... If I may add, I know it's a comment, but I, I really believe, and I hope the film speaks to this, that if change is to happen within Islam, it needs to happen from inside. Mm -hmm. It needs to happen from the perspective of people who can claim to be believers. Uh, it's going to happen inside out. Um, and that is a process that's really urgent right now. And, and thanks for sharing that. Uh, do we have more time? Or? Okay. Yes, sir. So I have the same comment. I want to thank you for this uh, privileged access to something. And for a long period of time, for me, when I was hearing about the Mecca, I didn't think it was this, a sacred world. And then in the middle of the movie, when you hear somebody say, I'm so happy that non Muslims don't do this because it's not as beautiful, it's a struggle for you because you didn't thought it's what you be like this. So for me, is uh, it helped me to understand your point of view to make change, to become more pure. And what I, I do respect people who have that faith, and I'm amazed, and that's why I came here to learn. And I have more questions now. <laughs> but it's good. I think that's a good thing. I also have a lot of questions, and uh, and I don't attempt. We don't attempt to answer all of them in the film, mm -hmm. and and I think that's important to li let it be that way. Um, so I'm glad you have questions, and I think there should be. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Um, the part of the movie that touched me the most was when you talked about your own mother. Yes. And you read her letters. And how do you feel about her now? Um, I, I feel that, well, in Mecca during the Hajj, mm -hmm. um, I felt a very strong feeling of me forgiving her. Mm -hmm. But I also felt that she forgave me. Uh, so those two things happened, and uh, there was a sense of completion which I think is honestly depicted in the film. Mm -hmm. And I think the personal story in the film um, is an important one, uh, and that's why we mm -hmm. constructed the film like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think would be your next work? Since both your films have been fantastic, it would be a hard act to keep the same level of excellence. So what are you planning to do next? <laughs> There's a book version of this, so unfortunately I'm going to have to write a book called A Sinner in Mecca, and you will be forced to read it. So that'll happen a year from now. Uh, as far as films go, um, yeah, it's going to be very different, I hope. I hope I can evolve as a filmmaker and not have to deal with Islam all the time. Uh, so, yeah. Maybe I'll make a film on those guys down the street. Yes. The, the giant, snowboarders. the snowboarders. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, were there moments where you, you feared for yourself during the movie, filming the movie, whether it was with the authorities or being trampled on or whatever? And were there moments since then that you feared for yourself? Yeah. There was a lot of that during the Hajj. Um, the place, uh, the stoning of the devil, the voiceovers, not the voiceover actually, that's location sound, says that I feel no sense of spirituality here. And I think that's important, that's exactly how I felt. And that's because I was stampeded to the ground in that space and had to sort of, it took a while to get up again. Uh, there was a sense of fear during the entire Hajj because I was most afraid that the pilgrims closest to me those within the Hajj group would find out who I was and what I had done. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I fear for my life now? Um, it's okay. I mean, as I said, I'm getting a lot of threats and stuff 
online, but you know, I'm learning how to deal with it as I go along. Yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering about the goats. Uh, that's something. Were you able to cope with it? Uh, or you just. Uh, because for me, it was like shocking to, to see that. I know it's not. If you were there, and that's what they have to do, you have to do. Uh, but mm. in a way, so maybe you talk about peace, but it's some sort of. Um, I don't know, it's not so peaceful for me to see that. And how do you cope with that? Are you, you agree with that ritual? Or? Well, animal sacrifice is not just there in Islam, it's, it's there in Judaism, for example, as well. So it's not something that's new. It comes from Abrahamic tradition. Um, I think um, it was very hard for me to do what I did. I came back from the Hajj with an enormous sense of incompletion and that is why I returned to my hometown in India to complete that act. Um, I had grown up watching animal sacrifice because it happens once a year, but doing it yourself is a very t challenging and difficult experience um, and I think the sequence shows that um, I felt a sense of tremendous loss, and, and I don't think I'll be able to do that again. But, uh, but I think it was important to show it in the film. And, and let me just reiterate that the ritual animal sacrifice is not about Islam being particularly barbaric. It's a tradition that's there in other religions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We know that uh, being gay is not something that's well accepted by the Muslim community abroad. Do you find that you have the same struggle here, or it's a bit easier for you within the Muslim community? Well, I don't live in Canada, uh, so I can't answer that, but uh, I think being gay and Muslim is really hard. In my first film, I made the argument that Islam and homosexuality can coexist. Um, I have traveled a lot with that film and now with this. I am a pessimist. I don't think in our lifetimes we are going to see Islam saying that homosexuality is okay. But the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, is not going to come down with an edict saying that homosexuality is okay either. So I think religion and homosexuality will continue to have a problem in our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. But that's just my opinion. Yes, sir. One more. Okay. Okay, there's two. Just thank you. Should I go? You talked about your Islam being a religion of peace. After you've gone through the Hajj, with all the violence and the danger and the garbage, do you think that other Muslims can? Um, the Hajj is a really arduous and difficult pilgrimage and the attempt in this film is to try and show it exactly as it is, warts and all. So it's not a Saudi cleansed version of the Hajj being this epic thing, which it also is. Uh, but it teaches you a lot of hum humility and it teaches you a lot of patience. And those are the two things I came back with. It's really humbling to see in Saudi Arabia these really old people who have saved money for their entire lives to come on this one journey um, as one of their last acts. So you learn a lot of humility and patience doing that. And I think it is very empowering for a very enormous number of Muslims that go on the pilgrimage. But the attempt I had uh, being in the business of truth telling was to show it exactly as it is. So I don't hide aspects of it. You see them, you see that man in my group saying that I'm glad they don't allow non-Muslims so that the Western world cannot see this. So I wanted to show it exactly as it is. Maybe that would be the last thing. Uh, 
I tried Grinder in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it doesn't work. I, act, uh, I mean, no, I didn't look for gay Muslims while I was there, uh, which I think was a sensible idea. Yeah. On that note, that's it. Thank you. Euh, si je peux vous demander...